Hey y'all, I am James Wright and welcome to my shop. You've been watching this build video for almost a year now and we figured we'd cram it all down into one build and it's nice to actually go through it and I'll kind of give you the overview of lessons I learned and things we can do better on this in the future. So let's dive into the quick overview video. We're going to be making all of this out of white oak, not red oak. Not green oak, but white oak, of course. This is wood by right. And I'm gonna be cutting all of this down to stock sizes. This is all about a half inch oversized, but I wanna leave some space so I can work with it. Most of the legs are gonna be made out of uh, inch and a half stock, and this is four quarters that I will be milling down to exactly where it needs to be. Most of this is quarter sawn oak that I've collected over the years. Some of it, like this piece, is over 100 years old that I pulled out of another piece of furniture that was falling apart. And it is going to be fun all around. But when I first get started, I want to make sure I break everything down and get it roughly to where it will be. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually laminate together the pieces that need to be glued up. Uh, there are two different tops for this, and both of them are much wider than the stock I have. They, so they need to be made uh, bigger boards out of smaller boards. Matching the stock is often a bit difficult, but if you do it right, it looks gorgeous. And the, the main top on this one is just absolutely beautiful. So after gluing them up, we're going to plane them down relatively smooth, clean out any glue, and start in on the joinery. This piece will end up being one of the side stretchers. It has the large tenon, and for the actual connection to the leg, the tenons are all through tenons, and so they're actually going to pass inside the leg. The large stretcher has a big one in the middle, and the front and back uh, will actually have smaller tenons that go above and below this tenon, and will actually cross inside the leg. It's one of the designs that I actually really, really like. This will be one of the stretchers for the front. There'll be a matching one on the top and the bottom. Now we're going to move on to the legs, and with this there are going to be a lot of mortises. I tried to make all of the mortises in this a simple quarter inch, and it's nice when they're all relatively the same so that you can, you can work with it. In the hash they'll be a little bit different, uh, but for the main joinery, um, quarter inch works fantastically. This will be one of the front legs, and so the front two stretchers are the small mortises and the large mortises for the stretcher that goes front to back on the sides. We're going to taper all of the legs down. Uh, so that they have a nice pleasing smaller size and we're tapering them from inch and a half down to three quarter by three quarter at the bottom. Onto the top, uh, the legs actually need to pass through the back of the top and so we need two squares. After getting all the joinery between the two legs, we now know exactly where these need to go. I don't want to cut these holes until I have that back stretcher set in there. We'll sneak up on the line and then finish it off, smoothing it and detailing it, uh, getting as close as we can. Once we get the base all basically built and we have the, the carcass set up, we need to create a couple slides that go inside. These slides are what the drawer will actually sit on. And yes, it will be wood on wood, which works incredibly well, and if it's waxed and oiled, it works, works great. There's going to be a large rabbit cut into this. It could be made out of two 3 8 inch pieces that are laminated together, but I like using the rabbit. This drawer slide will then get glued onto the bottom of the side stretchers. And that way, this will actually support it. And honestly, you don't need anything more than glue to put it on here. You could put in some fasteners or dowels or something like that, but glue has worked very well for me in the past on other furniture. With a set of pinch rods, we can now figure out our drawer. And the drawer is just going to be a very, very simple dovetailed box. Um, you'll also notice that I'm maybe putting the dovetails on the wrong side. They're going to be on the front uh, and not on the sides, which are really going to confuse a lot of people. But in all honesty, with something like this, it's not going to make that big a difference. And putting them on the front, if they're going to be a through tenon, uh, through dovetail, it looks so much better. And I love the, the look of the show tails. Um, on the front of this. So we need to make sure that the front and back are exactly the same length and the two sides are exactly the same length. So once you cut one of them, use that to then measure the other one rather than measuring with a tape on both of them. They're each going to be ever so slightly different. All of the drawers are going to get a groove into the bottom to capture the, the drawer bottom. Now, I could have made the drawer bottom out of plywood, and that would have been very stable and nice, uh, but I like making them out of solid wood. It just gives it a little bit more mm, happiness in it, <laughs> and I like the way it looks. Uh, so we're going to have to laminate that up in a little bit and uh, do some resawing. Now, for the dovetails, 
I uh, want to make these relatively simple, and I make mine um, a little more aggressive than they need to be with a hardwood like this, something like a, a one to six. And uh, I, I want to see the dovetails because they're, they're going to be showing on the front. We're going to lay them out so that the groove doesn't show on the front. It only shows on the two sides. Uh, and that way, if we want to leave it open, we can. If we want to plug it, we can as well. I have a whole pile of videos on how to cut dovetails. I'm not going to go too deeply into it. Uh, but I like to cut the tails first. I find that much, much easier to transfer the lines to the pins than the tails, than the pins to the tails. Dovetails scare a lot of people, but in all honesty, they really shouldn't. They are a very, very simple joint, and if you take your time on it, you can make really nice dovetails right off the bat. Are they going to be perfect? No. Um, are they going to be functional and work well? Yes. Uh, you can make good dovetails very, very quickly and very, very easily uh, with just a little bit of practice. And it's one of those things where once you do it and you understand it, then it's one of those skills you have for the rest of your life. Now for the bottom of this, we're going to be resawing some oak into two panels and then gluing these together. These end up being a little bit thicker than quarter inch, which gives the bottom a little more stability. But we need to glue them together in order to get one big panel. So panel glue up and squeeze them down. Because they're too thick for the grooves, we're going to need to actually pillow the top of this and bevel down the outsides until they just fit into the groove. Next, we're going to move on to the carcass that is above the main shelf or the main top. Uh, there are going to be four stretchers running front to back and two stretchers running side to side in between the legs, uh, as well as there will be the top legs, uh, which actually sit on top of the top and hold up the top top. <laughs> I love naming board pieces. <laughs> so we're going to be just taking these down to their final dimension and getting them all close. It is very important that you label everything because there are going to be a lot of the exact same pieces. I like using blue tape because if I mislabel something, it's very easy to go back and change it. Again, we're going to be doing mortise and tenon on all these, and they're all going to be simple quarter-inch tenons. Uh, we want to make sure that they go through the leg, and at present we're going to have them stick out about a quarter-inch out past it. When we're done, we're going to trim them back up and make them a little bit smaller. Um, but I like having about a quarter-inch to play with on the end. For the small hash pieces, uh, we're actually going to be creating a little bit of a tenon. Now, in the design, I uh, originally was just going to have the whole hash going into the leg and the stretcher, uh, but I like creating that little tenon. It hides things away, and they're really quick and easy to make, um, though it's not necessary. All of these hash marks are going to be half-lapped together. There will be three that run vertical and two that run horizontal, and uh, you need to cut down in halfway and then remove the waste in between. Now, if I'm going too fast on here, I do have detailed videos on every step on this. There is a, a series of four other videos, and I'll leave links to those in the description. Um, but you can actually uh, follow along with the build if you want. Once we get these all cut out, we want to make sure that they just pop together and have a nice tight fit. And this will create a simple hash work that then fits between the stretcher above and below, and then the legs in front and in back. Once we have the hash made, now we can create all of the little slots for these to go into. <laughs> and I made them a little bit loose uh, because there's a little bit of play in this. One of the things that made it a, a bit easier than making them solid, but uh, you can do it whatever way you want. This is the top leg, and it will not be tapered because it just goes from the top to the top top um, and sits on one and underneath the other. But it will have all of the hash going into it as well as the stretchers running into it, so it will have a lot of different little mortises. The hash marks are only going to go in about an eighth inch, uh, about a quarter inch into the legs and stretchers, uh, but all of the tenons from the legs and stretchers will go all the way through, with the exception of the stretchers that go side to side, which is what I'm working on here. These tenons are only three quarter inch, actually they're a little less than three quarter inch long, uh, because they are going to run into the other stretchers tenon that goes all the way through. Um, so these ones will actually tee into it, as you can see up here. In the initial designs, I was going to make this a dovetail joint, uh, but after thinking about it, it really isn't going to add that much strength to make this a dovetail, so I just ended up making it a simple tenon that runs into the other through tenon. <laughs> we want to make sure whatever marks we make on the uh, the top legs that they are the exact same on the back legs uh, so that all of the marks transfer through. And also we want to make sure that the marks for the bottom stretcher on the top, while wow, that's getting confusing, uh, that that is right at the top of the top plate. 
I hope that makes sense. Um, if, <laughs> if you want more detail, I do have plans available on Wood by Wright. Uh, but yes, so we're going to be making the exact same marks we make in here. And these are going to then fit into each other so that the legs facing each other have matching joints for the stretcher that needs to go from side yeah. to side. Once we get this all together and we make sure it all fits, then we can take it all back apart and start doing all of the detail. And there's a lot of little detail in this. We're going to chamfer all the corners and clean them up, especially on the bottom of the feet. We want to chamfer these so they don't slide apart. We're going to card scrape everything and get it really nice and clean. And then I'm just going to do a really quick hit with 400 grit sandpaper. That will allow the oil from the finish to soak in a little bit more and just make it happier. Uh, for the top, we're actually going to attach it with a figure eight clips. And then there will also be a handle put on the front. Originally, I was thinking I would make a drawer pull to put in here, but eh, I decided to go the, uh, the simple handle route. For all of the glue up, I'm going to be using epoxy because it has an incredibly long open time. And uh, it allows me to make mistakes and put things back and forth. And this is one of those glue ups where there are just a lot of things that have to go together at the same time. And uh, even with some of the hide glues and uh, fish glues, glues and brain glues and using other things in there, you're not going to get the open time that you will with epoxy. And this allows me to do a, a lot before anything starts to kick. I want to make sure I have just enough in every one of these. One thing I wish I had done is put squeeze clamps to hold this hash together because they kind of worked out a little bit um, during the glue up and I didn't notice it until after everything set. Uh, just to hold those together. Uh, they were a bit of a pain to wiggle all down and make sure that everything was actually fitting uh, because there are a pile of tenons that all have to line up and fit together. Now, people are going to start worrying about all the epoxy uh, running out and squeezing out here and there. Uh, it's really not that big of a pain because epoxy cleans up very easily. Um, with a card scraper, it does. Um, you don't have to worry about sanding or trying to get into nooks and crannies. You can come into the card scraper and just peel it off. And it really only took about 10, 15 minutes to clean off all the epoxy, get down to bare wood, touch it up again with sandpaper, and we're ready for finish. All of these tenons are sticking out a quarter inch. I'm going to stick out about an eighth inch or so. So we're going to trim them back, and then I'm going to come in with a chisel bevel down and bevel them all to a 45 degree. And I like that, that squared bevel look. Some of them are a little bit harder to get into. Some of them are a little bit easier. Um, but once they're done, it's, it's just a really pleasing look to it. I want to make sure we get all of the hardware on before putting the top on. And you can see how these will all fit in there. And uh, yeah, Phillips. Yeah, I switched them out to Robertson's later on, so that's a lot better. <laughs> now it's all together, it's all glued up, and we are ready for the best part. I'm going to be using Rubio Monocoat for this. Um, it is just... It's incredibly fun, uh, so simple, and I have a couple videos on applying Rubio Monocoat and uh, uh, why I'm using it, but it is the fastest, simplest finish you're ever going to get. It looks like boiled Linseo on paste wax. It's incredibly clean. There are no VOCs to it. It is incredibly durable. It's what I put on my dining room table, and we have that every day with kids scratching things on it, and... I'm in love with it. The only downside to it is it is a very expensive finish. Um, a little bit does go a long way, but man, the, the look on it is just incredible, especially with how those rays pop out in the quarter sawn. Really happy with this, and I get to look at this thing every night before going to sleep. I am loving it. So I hope you like this. If you do want to get plans for this, we have those available down in the description down below. Also, we have it available with the whole bedroom bundle where you can get the plans for this as well as the bed and the dresser. Um, so it kind of all goes together. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I hope you liked it. Uh, it has been an interesting build for me. I've got a few other furniture projects coming up. I always try and have one currently in process in the shop, and this one has been a little while longer than others. So let me know what you would want me to build. Throw that down in the comments down below, as well as anytime you hit like, share, subscribe. Thank you! Uh, simply putting comment down below or clicking the share button, that really helps us out. It gets us in front of more people, helps the channel to grow. Thank you. Also, you may notice that there's a bunch of names over here. Those are all of the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you. So thank you. Uh, without you guys, the lights wouldn't be on, videos wouldn't be running. And if you like that and would like to help out, think about becoming a patron on Patreon or clicking the little join button here on YouTube. There are a bunch of special perks for both. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. These short compilation videos always remind me of my college days. They just make me think of cramming it all in before the test.